so I know a lot of people have done some variation of Master Chief versus a Space Marine or Master Chief versus a Custodian or a Primarch or something of the likes. So in order to give this sort of a unique twist and to make this as non-controversial as possible and with uh, defending my points as little as possible, I decided to do Master Chief 1v1ing one Space Marine from each of the original 20 Legions. Second and 11th Primarch and Legions don't exist so I'm just going to put random chapters there just for gets and shiggles. I know I've mentioned that it's going to be a very average Astartes from each Legion, but I think that's important to really hammer that in, because any name character is obviously going to be better than Master Chief. We have the Chapter Master of the Ultramarines who can just casually 1v1 a Catan Shard. Also, the Legions are going to be equipped with Mark 10 Tacticus Armor. Uh, don't think too much on it. Also, there's going to be no Primaris, no Librarians, and no Psychers. Just imagine that some great era crusade Astartes were hanging around Magnus and he said hocus pocus clapped his hands a couple times and boom they're in front of Chief. Chose Master Chief since he's the most well-rounded of the Spartans and Spartan 2s are said to be the best Spartans on an individual level. I know Noble 6 who is a Spartan 3 is technically on the same lethality level as Master Chief but they operated in very very different roles. Master Chief was the leader of a fire team, whereas Noble Six was just an Oni assassin. That's really watering down Noble Six, but this isn't a video about him. It has to be said that Master Chief isn't the best Spartan 2 at any one thing. He is just the most well-rounded. He is a jack-of-all-trades, so to speak. Or he's just that friend who... No matter what game it is, within two weeks he's already better than you. Also, just to add to the spice of this, this 1v1 is going to happen on Rust, and the terrain and all the pipes, ladders and such, somehow just don't snap with an armored silverback gorilla barreling up them. We're just going to go past that, this is Rust, the terrain is indestructible. Now, time for some stats. So a lot of the tactical specifications for the Mark 10 Tacticus armor are going to be on screen right now. There isn't a whole lot to be said of the armor, other than there is just a whole lot more of it. They have lots of padding, and they can use different parts of their armor to tank shots, but they don't have the luxury of an energy shield, which is much more versatile. My biggest complaint with a lot of the Space Marine armor, and it's almost like it restricts your movement. Your range of motion is cut down significantly, and when you're fighting normal people, that's not a big deal. But when you're fighting other superhumans who are going to be able to slide between your legs and whatnot, maneuver around you it's going to be a big deal. Under the car worth of armor plates is the Black Carapace, which acts as an undersuit or exoskeleton that allows for the integration of the necessary ports and system. Each armor plate, as I said, is going to be inches thick, and there will be multiple plates. The community, and by the community I mean Reddit, and generally agrees, and by that I mean a single post saying 6 and a bunch of other posts saying crazy stuff like 1 round or 12, we're going to say that 6 is a comfy middle ground and that it takes 6 direct shots from a bolter to kill. Now, for the guns they're going to be using. They're both going to be using a bolt pistol with 5 magazines in total, which doesn't sound like a lot, but keep in mind that these are monster tall boy sized rounds. Not the normal size monster, the tall boys. Also, I almost forgot to mention this, but the bolt rounds are set to a timer. They are meant to impact, wait a second, not really a full second, but you know, there's going to be a slight wait time before it then explodes, like a penetrating concussive blast. I don't want to make half the video stats, so let's just say it outright. If you want to see stats, feel free to pause the video, but I'll just go over some basic. While the Imperium strategy is largely to just have more than the opponent, you know, quantity is a quality all in its own, whereas the UNSC likes to continually improve their hardware, so that way they can constantly release new generations. The Imperium does this, but they don't invest in the R&D quite to the level of the UNSC. Chief's Gen 3 Mjolnir is equipped with lots of quality of life components, let's say. Mjolnir is the brainchild of the totally not a war criminal Catherine Halsey, or Mum, as George would say. The energy shielding brought about with the Mjolnir armor is enough to tank multiple plasma pistol or plasma rifle shots before collapsing, and this is important. Both a plasma pistol and a bolter do very similar damage. The Tallboy of Bathwater may be a less elegant and more brutal way of one-shotting someone, 
but a plasma pistol is just as effective. A well-placed plasma pistol shot on an unarmed Spartan will one-shot them. Whereas the Space Marines like to just cram extra organs into people so that way they can fight anywhere all the time, the Spartans are still human largely. They feel more human than the Space Marines at least. Yeah, they're operating in bullet time 24-7, but you can still interact with them, you can still see the humanity. And because of that, a lot of the benefits that the Spartans have is the Mjolnir. The whole reason that Master Chief is able to fall from space or able to survive in near vacuum is solely because of the Mjolnir. Whereas the Space Marines could fight in some crazy environments with almost no armor. We're lost in the weeds again, so we can just get back on track. Say the Chief can take three direct shots or five glancing hits before his shield bucks, while the Mjolnir would take one shot max before he dies. I feel like I'm making tabletop rules for a 1v1 meme battle, and uh, I think I'm taking this too serious. It's also worth mentioning that Mjolnir has this composite gel layer, which allows for significant impact allowing for Chief to fall from orbit and such. It also is made out of a titanium carbon oxide, I believe is the term, no, alloy, my apologies. Each are also gonna be equipped with the standard issue Halo Spartan combat knife. It's just a knife, we don't really have a lot of specs for it. It just says hyperdense material and it's got a handle. It also doubles as a throwing knife and it's known to pierce the outer hull of Covenant Strikecraft and Mjolnir. So first off, we have the Dark Angels. Chief loses, I'm not gonna mince words here. Even neophyte Dark Angels are on par with some of the full-fledged members of certain chapters. Not all chapters, but some chapters. Dark Angels are no joke. They are the best for a reason. I can safely say they are within the top 5% of Space Marine chapters. Dark Angels are that friend that you introduce him to a game and a week later he's already better than you, and they're slouched while you're sitting straight up locked in. They have Blue Tiger on every weapon. Now, since the Second Legion doesn't exist, I wanted to put the Noise Marines, since the Third Legion comes up next and it just seems fitting. We know Chief can and does get slowed or incapacitated by sound, or at the very least, it hurts him. In Halo 3, when Cortana or the Gravemind are talking to Chief, it physically slows him down. Now, I know a lot of this was for rendering purposes and because the Xbox 360 was super underpowered, but still, it happened. I'm counting. The Noise Marines would just yell at him until his brain explodes. That's not really on the list, but it's what would happen. Slanesh W. Next up, we've got the Emperor's Children, who are namely duelists, who 100% would win in almost any situation where it's Chief versus one of them. They are perfectionists in everything they do, and they are always striving for better. In a melee, Chief is losing. The entire specialization of the Emperor's Children is 1v1s. In the Ferris Manus Primarch book, it even discusses how the Emperor's Children have the single best duelists in all of the Legions, Arca Dewana. But yeah, this unironically is a second Slanesh EW. Fourth Legion, Iron Warriors. I'm not gonna mince words again, Chief just loses. Given the sheer endurance and quality of the Iron Warriors, Chief wouldn't last long enough to secure the W. They are going to lock down some part of the map, and they are just going to hold it. Fifth Legion White Scars, Chief loses solely for speed. These are the type of guys to run lightweight marathon and ninja while using a silent Spaz 12. I will not elaborate besides this. Six Legion Space Wolves, Chief is just gonna lose. These are actual superhuman killers, this is their entire job. You can look at Exhibit 2 and 11 for further clarification. Vilka Fenrica are just going to 720 him off the top ropes. We don't know how they got there, but they're gonna. The Seventh Legion Imperial Fists, I was going to put as an even fight, but honestly, they are just such well-rounded, disciplined warriors that it has to go in their favor. Sons of Dorne are no joke. They have high standards for recruitment and can use defensive strategy far in excess of the normal marine. Sons of Dorne understand that sometimes the best defense is a good offense. For the first time, Chief is going to get a W. The Night Lords just don't have a viable strategy here. They're the 8th Legion, by the way, I should have mentioned that before, but we're already here. They are the knife that acts in the dark. They would essentially try to corner or ambush Chief, and that's just not going to happen. It might work once, but it's not going to happen again. As soon as Chief knows what's happening, he's going to be playing wider angles, he's going to avoid corridors, and if the Night Lords did kill Chief, in between rounds, they would be teabagged 
sandbagging his body and yelling racial slurs. This is one of those rare times where Chief might be winning by such a margin that he tries a 360 off the top just to be him. The 9th Legion Blood Angels is going to be a bit of a contentious one, since I know a lot of people want me to say that he's going to win handedly, but if the Marine goes into either the Red Thirst or the Black Rage, it's going to work almost against them. The main enemies of Halo 2 and 3 were massive hulking brutes who were able to essentially one-shot Spartan, so Chief has a lot of experience dealing with Berserkers. In a situation where they fall to either the Red Thirst or the Black Rage, it's going to be a Chief victory through and through, but otherwise it could go either way. They have a really, really weird scaling where they have a higher high, but it's harder to get to that height if it makes sense. That 1 in 100 strength is going to be stronger than the 1 in 100 strength of almost any other legion or chapter. 10th Legion Iron Hands is kind of a tough one, since the average Iron Hands is pretty augmented. It's kind of hard to remove an Iron Hand from their armor, since it's literally their arm or their leg. In this case, I'm going to assume it's still Mark 10, and we'll just give them a little bit of augments. We'll say they have one augmented eye, three testicles, one robo arm, and a robo leg up to the knee. The knee is robotic to clarify since my words sometimes suck. It's a pretty uneven victory. The Iron Hand is going to win pretty comfortably through sheer endurance and mechanical precision. It also has to be said that on an individual level, the Iron Hands are some of the strongest physically, like they can lift the most or hit the hardest, than any other Marine. Their augmetic arm or leg would 100% shatter Mjolnir and break an energy shield. Think of someone who somehow got to pick two of each perk, but has the humanity of a brick. Bro has Marathon in sight of hand, stopping power in lightweight, commando in steady aim. Kind of an unfair matchup since you can't really separate the Iron Hand from their armor, but I'm tired of unspecialized Astartes matchups, so after Manus died is much more fun. So since the 11th Legion didn't exist, I decided to put the Lamenters here. Uh, there is no chance they're going to win. I have to dunk on them. The community hates them. I don't know why. I love the Lamenters. Uh, but yeah. Chief's just going to throw a throwing knife up in the air and it's going to hit him every single time, even if they're indoors. We got the 12th Legion World Eaters, and for this scenario, we're going to say they have the Butcher's Nails. Chief wins. It's another Berserk situation, and the level-headedness of Chief is going to shine here. If Chief gets cornered, he loses, but I don't see that happening. Chief wins flawlessly 75% of the time. The only real strategy I could see the World Eaters using here is yelling so loud that it just disorients him, kind of like Scrambler. Alright, so for the 13th Legion, we got the Blueberry Boys, and it has to be said that Chief is going to win the first round. The Vanilla Marines are not going to shine in the first encounter. The second and third, they will counter every single thing that Master Chief throws at them. This might also be one of those weird situations where they add Master Chief into the Codex Astartes, making this the second update to the Codex Astartes in 10,000 years. These are those nerd friends who have the game guide for MW2 even though it doesn't really help you with online play. We got the 14th Legion Death Guard. Like Perturabo and the Iron Warriors, the sheer endurance of the Death Guard will prevail here. Death Guard are no joke despite in 40k being seen as a joke. The sheer grit of the Death Guard and willingness to suffer for victory just can't be understated. Death Guards will happily lose a limb or two if that means that they can use one of the remaining limbs to rip a throat out or twist a head off. Chief isn't comfortable with the level of tank that the Death Guard bring. Imagine one man army with a riot shield. He will let you tire out and then just beat you with their severed limbs. So since I said there's no psychers, the 15th Legion, Thousand Sons, they're just going to lose pretty handedly. They are just your average marine, or below average marine in this case. If psychers were allowed, it would obviously be a sweep, but it's a beat down the other way around. So this one's going to be another contentious one. I see this easily being an Astartes victory. The 16th Legion, Luna Wolves you know, fuck the Sons of Horus, those guys suck. But it has to be said that the 16th Legion was one of the premier legions. Not quite on the level of the Dark Angels, but still extremely competent. They were the masters of assault. Chief loses almost every single time, there's nothing you can do. These are the top 10% of Space Marines. So, the 17th Legion Word Bearers, uh, this one's a pretty simple one again. The Word Bearers would ask for a prayer break before the match starts, and Chief would just shoot them the second they're done praying, or mid-praying, depending on his mood. 
I don't need perks when I have Jesus. With the Salamanders, or the 18th Legion, Chief wins again. The reason this one is so decisive is that the Salamanders are handicapped by not being allowed to have fully or near fully custom kit. If a Salamander was allowed their default kit, they would win, but then Chief would need some kind of buff as well kind of an Iron Hand situation, except they augment their armor, not their bodies. However, the Salamanders and Chief wouldn't fight, the Salamander would run into a corner and start talking to Chief, one thing leads to another, and either the Salamander would join the UNSC, or Chief would join the Salamanders. Either way, Salamanders win in our heart, and that's all that matters. For the 19th Legion, we have the Raven Guard, also known as the actually good version of the Night Lords. They will 100% just materialize from the shadows. Chief will try, but he cannot hide from the shadows. This definitely isn't my bias seeping in. Well, all I can envision is the Raven Guard pulling up a mod menu, going under the map, coming up behind Chief, and just knifing him. Alternatively, they would just play the range game, playing a constant fighting retreat, or in the odd chance that they do ambush him, but I don't see the ambush working more than once. And lastly, we have the Alpha Legion, or the 20th Legion. Uh, Chief wins. Information Warfare isn't going to help at all here. None of the Alpha Legion's abilities here will help. They are just average Marines, or slightly less than average Marines. The type to run Cold-Blooded, Sitrep, and Scavenger. And lastly, we will go over all of it again real fast and tally everything up. So, Chief won against the Night Lords, Lamenters, World Eaters, Thousand Sons, Word Bearers, and Alpha Legion, or numbers 8, 11, 12, 15, 17, 20. Lamenters aren't 11, but whatever, fight me. For the Astartes, we have Dark Angels, Noise Marines, Emperor's Children, Iron Warriors, White Scars, Space Wolves, Iron Hands, Ultramarines, Death Guard, Luna Wolves, and Raven Guards. For numbers 1 through 7, 10, 13, 14, 16, 18, and 19. Undecided with the Blood Angels because if they berserk, Chief wins, but whatever. And lastly, Chief and the Salamander go and enjoy a nice lunch.